Hey, John here with Prime Studios, and in this video I'm going to show you guys how to use the Canon AE-1 35mm film camera, which is one of the most commonly used film cameras by students today. Alright, starting off, I'm going to go ahead and put in the battery. This camera uses uh, what's called a V28PX battery. It's a small 6 volt, and in my opinion, I think Varda is a great brand uh, to get batteries from. So the actual battery compartment for this camera is actually on the front right here. There's a little latch that you can push with your finger to open up the door. And you'll see the positive and negative terminals on the inside. Go ahead and take your battery, positive side up, and you just go ahead and insert it in there. Now, if you have any kind of corrosion in there, you're going to need to clean that off before you put in any battery. Uh, the camera itself won't work without a battery. The shutter won't click and the uh, winding knob will not move forward. So you definitely need a battery in order for this camera to function. In order to test the battery, there's a button on the top of the camera right here. When you push this button down, you're going to see uh, the light meter inside the viewfinder move. Now, as long as the viewfinder is sitting at f4, that's good for a new battery. If it goes closer to 5.6, then that means your battery is dying. Now, in a lot of cameras, you'll have uh, something that looks like this on the bottom, and oftentimes on film cameras, this is where the battery for the light meter goes, a little button battery. But on the AE-1, this is not a battery compartment. This is actually a compartment that covers a winding knob um, that's meant for use when you attach a motor onto the bottom of the camera in order to uh, motorize the winding of the film. Now, for those of you who don't know how to load film yet, you can go ahead and check out my how to load film uh, video, uh, and then you can jump back to here as we keep going. Now, after you've loaded your film, you can go ahead and put part of the film box right here in the back to remind you of what film you're using. And all you have to do, you just take your film box here and you can just rip off the front. You just go ahead and slide it into there. So it can act as a reminder, oh yeah, I'm shooting Ilford Delta 400 film. So that way if you put your camera down for a month or two and then pick it back up, you can see exactly what film is in there, whether it's black and white or color and what ISO it is. So now that we know we're using 400 ISO film, we're going to need to go ahead and tell the camera that. So the ISO is adjusted by the this outside silver knob here. And the indicator for ISO is this little uh, green numbers right here. And the way you adjust it, you can move the uh, advanced lever out of the way here, and you actually pull up on this silver knob, and you can turn it. Now, as I turn the knob, you'll see that the green numbers are changing, and you want to go ahead, and we're going to go ahead and put that on 400. Now, on the camera, it says ASA, uh, which stands for American Standards Association, uh, but uh, that has been replaced by the more modern ISO, and it means the exact same thing. Now for those of you who don't know the basics of aperture and shutter speed, uh, you can go ahead and check out my video how uh, SLRs work uh, to see all the basics of that. So the shutter speed for this camera is this black knob here. And in order to change the shutter speed, you're going to go ahead and uh, just rotate the knob. And the AE-1 has shutter speed from one thousandth of a second all the way down to one second and then two full seconds and it also has B which stands for bulb mode. On the bulb mode the shutter door will stay open so long as the shutter uh, button is being depressed uh, and that's for really long exposures like five minute, ten minute, hour long exposures. Now on the Canon AE-1 in order to adjust aperture it uses lenses that have an aperture ring which is this adjustment right here which I can move back and forth like this. So this particular lens goes from f1.8 all the way down to f22 and it also has a green marking, a green A, and other lenses will have maybe a green uh, O or green zero. Now that means uh, an automatic setting where as you adjust the shutter speed the camera is going to choose the aperture for you instead of you doing it manually. So this is manual aperture where you directly choose it on the lens or you can let the camera choose it by, switch, by depressing this button here and switching over to A just like that. And next I'm going to show you how to use the light meter but in order to activate the light meter there's two different ways you can do that. First is the auto exposure button, which is this black button right here. And as you hold it down, that's going to turn on the light meter, which you're going to see inside the viewfinder itself. You can also do this uh, by holding down the shutter button halfway, just like this. Now, I feel that this is a little more risky way to do it because it's very easy to accidentally take a picture. Now, on the Canon AE-1, the light meter is a little bit different than most cameras. On the AE-1, uh, the easiest way to use the light meter is to have the aperture ring set at A, and then you're going to be adjusting the shutter speed using this knob here. As you adjust the shutter speed in this mode, 
uh, the light meter is going to be telling you um, what aperture it's deciding to use on the lens. Now if you're adjusting the shutter speed and the needle goes into the red area, that means that the picture is going to be overexposed and way too bright. If you see a red light appear at the bottom and start blinking, that is the underexposure warning light and it's telling you that the film isn't going to get enough light and it's going to be underexposed. Now another way to use the light meter is to take the aperture ring and take it off the A mode. Now in this mode when you use the light meter and hold the auto exposure button down, it's going to tell you as you adjust the shutter speed what aperture you should use, but it's not going to do it for you like it will in the A mode. In this mode you'll have to adjust the aperture ring to whatever the light meter is telling you. This is also an easy way for you to overexpose or underexpose on purpose by seeing what the light meter says and then going one stop or two stops above or below what it says to do. Focusing on the AU1 is quite easy, so it's all manual focus and you're going to be adjusting the lens using its focus ring. As you adjust the focus ring, you're going to see a part of the viewfinder right in the middle that has a split image. And in order to know if something's in focus or not, you put that over the object and then adjust it until everything lines up. Another button on the AE1 is the Depth of Field Preview button, which is right here. Now what this button does is when you push it in, and it can take a little bit to lock it down, um, it will close down the aperture and the lens to what it will do when it actually takes the photograph. This will give you a preview of what the depth of field or basically the range of focus is going to be. Now in order to use this button you need to remember that you need to have the film wound and the shutter cocked in order for it to work. So right now I have it on uh, f8 and if I push it down you can actually see the aperture close down. And if I put it in place it'll stay locked like that. To release it I just push down this little silver thing here and it'll pop back. Now doing this will also lower the amount of light coming into the viewfinder and it can make it quite difficult to see. My personal opinion is that the depth of field preview is fairly useless. And really you should just be pre-visualizing the uh, photo in your head anyway and uh, using the markings on the lens as a reference for what your depth of field is. So to further explain depth of field, uh, you can look at these markings on your lens here. Now when you turn your focusing ring, you can see that uh, it has green numbers and white numbers. The green numbers are in feet and the white numbers are in meters. This little sideways 8 symbol is an infinity symbol, uh, meaning you're focused all the way to infinity. Now you'll also see the aperture ring here, but between the focusing ring and the aperture ring is this guide, and this is actually aperture numbers that it's talking about here. So for example, if I focus in my focusing ring here and I shoot at f, let's say 11, right? And I look at my guide here, there's an 11 here and there's 11 on the other side. Now what that's telling me is that if I shoot at f11 with this focus ring in this position, then everything between about 8 feet from the camera and 30 feet from the camera is going to be in focus. But anything closer than 8 feet or further away than 30 feet is going to be out of focus. Now this small silver button above the auto exposure button is what's called the backlight control switch. Now this button is kind of interesting. It's basically used when you are on the automatic mode here and you've chosen a shutter speed but let's say you're shooting a scene that has a really bright spot in it like you're in a dark room with a single small bright window but you want to get the exposure right for the room. Now the camera light meter will try to uh, read just an average of the entire frame but by holding down this button when you take the photo it's going to automatically overexpose by about one and a half stops basically purposefully overexposing the photograph in order to get uh, the detail in dark areas. Now I think that's kind of silly uh, and a strange way to do it. I feel it's a lot easier just to use a light meter to figure out what your settings should be. Like let's say it's telling me at the shutter speed that I need f 5.6 to get the right exposure. But let's say I need to overexpose a little bit because of that bright area. Well then I'm just going to go ahead and do f4 or maybe f 2.8 to go ahead and let more light into the camera without having to use this button that frankly I think is kind of weird. So on the top of the camera here you're going to go ahead and find the shutter button. Now the shutter button, uh, it seems obvious, is what you're going to use to take the photo. Now remember, a halfway depression of the button will activate the light meter inside the viewfinder uh, and as well as the auto exposure black button right here. Those both do that same thing. Now the shutter button has a couple functions. Pushing it all the way down takes the photo, but there's a couple other things that you can do. 
uh, this lever on the side here, if you pull it down like this, that's the lock position for the shutter. So let's say you've cocked your shutter, but you want to throw it in your bag, but you don't want it to accidentally take a picture. You go ahead and set that lock button, and now it, it won't take a picture. Now, if you flip the lever the other way, that's actually a self-timer, which is pretty cool. And you get this little red light indicator. So if I want to take a picture now, and I push down the button, this red light starts blinking, and it gives me about 10 seconds uh, to get in front of the camera or, or set up whatever the shot is. And then after those 10 seconds, it'll take the photo. Now, if you look at the top of the shutter button here, you're going to see uh, a little screw uh, recession there. And what that's for is for a remote cable, just like this one, where you push it down and it'll stick out a little rod there. And you actually just screw that into the camera itself, and then you can activate the shutter remotely. Now this lever right here is what's called the winder lever, and then that's how you actually advance the film. So after you've taken a picture, um, you can go ahead and pull this and it will pull the film this way. Now as you pull this, I don't have any film in here right now, but if I did, this should be turning, indicating that the film is being pulled out of the canister and across the back of the camera. Now this lever, uh, when you're shooting, should be set right here at this angle so that's easier for you to take a picture, wind, take a picture, wind. And every time you wind, the counter here is going to go forward and show you which picture you're on. Right now it says 11, I'm on 12, 13, now, in order to change the lens on the camera, it actually kind of depends on which lens you're using. On Canon lenses, you're going to find a button right here on uh, the ring that attaches the lens to the camera. So what you do is you push that release button, and you're going to turn the whole lens, and it's going to pop right off. Now, there's a marking here, a red dot, and on the camera, there's a red dot. When you want to put it back on, you line up those red dots, and without pushing any buttons, you just turn it until it clicks, and it's on. Now other lenses like this Vivitar lens here are going to attach a little differently. Um, they still have the same mount, which is called the FD mount, and it's completely different from what Canon uses today. Uh, but it, you'll see the red dot here, you go ahead and line those up, and instead of having a button, as you're depressed on the camera, you're simply going to turn this ring until it's nice and firm, and that's it, the lens is on the camera. And then when you want to take it off, you just turn the ring back the other way, and it'll come off. Now the last outside part of the camera to talk about is this little port right here, which has a cover. Take that off, you'll see the, what's called the PC sync port. Uh, this is an older style way of syncing flashes, and it's basically you plug in a cord here that then runs over to an off-camera flash so that the flash will go off at the same time that the shutter does. Now when you're all done shooting your roll of film, in order to rewind it, the release button for rewinding the film is down here. So you're going to go ahead and push that down, that's going to unlock the film so that you can flip this open and you can wind the film back into the case. Now once you know that the film has gone all the way back in the case, you can open up the back of the camera by pulling up and it'll open up the back. And then close it, just like that. And that's how you use the Canon AE-1 film camera.